Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, we're talking about the new button feature that's available in Power BI. Stay tuned. Okay, buttons. Power BI, the latest version, includes this new feature for buttons. I like it, it's really cool. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how you set it up, but why? You guys know there's always a method, a method to the madness that's up here. So I had a customer and they were like, hey Patrick, we'd really like to have this free text search thing using a custom visual that's available. And we would also like to use slicers, but we only wanna see one at a time and immediately boom 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 my brain start firing off like pistons and was like use buttons this is a great reason to use buttons and i wanted to use them so you guys know how i like to do what so instead of talking let's head over to my laptop all right so i got this report and on this report, there's lots of stuff going on. And so you can see all the range slicers and the drop down boxes and, you know, the slicers, the different variations of slices here. And basically they would like to see those when they want to use them, but they want to use this um, custom visual. Let's see what the name of this custom visual is, right? The name of it is text filter. So go to the custom visual, right? So click on the ellipsis and choose import from marketplace and just type in when it, when it pops open, Right, if you want to use that visual, go ahead. If you want to follow along or, you know, kind of do something similar, go ahead and type text in the search box and choose text filter and add. All right, so that's what I did, right? That's the, that's the element they want to use. So they want to use that sometimes, but they only want to see, you know, that free text. And then they want to see all these other, you know, different variations of slicers when they want to see them. And so initially they had created two reports and they were making people toggle back between those two reports. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. that's not very efficient. Right. So you guys know how I do. Right. Not lazy, just efficient. And so I said, you guys should use buttons. They were like, Patrick, show us, enlighten us, show us what these buttons are. All right. So um, I have my report kind of set up and I made a little space. Right. I used a little design surface for my button. So you'll see right here there's buttons in the latest release. So I'm going to go ahead and click and I'm going to there's you can choose different icons here, but I don't want to use any of those. I'm going to use a blank one. Right. And I'll show you why. So it puts it over there. So there's my button and I'm going to format it a little bit. I'm going to give me a, myself a little more real estate and then I'm going to go over here and the button text, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to call this one search, right? And I'm going to make it black, the color, and I'm going to make it bold. Follow me. You guys follow me, follow me, follow me. And then I'm going to go to my outline and right on hover. I want my outline to be red, no transparency, and I want the round to be about, eh, let's say 20, okay? So when I hover, you can see how it, all right? And that's just simply saying on hover, do that, all right? Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this. I don't wanna repeat everything, right? I'm gonna copy it. What I'm gonna do now is go and change the text to filter. So basically, when I click one button, it's going to show my search option. And then when I click the other button, it's going to show the filter option. And so what I like to do is, so my other elements, you know, the, the, the text search box, I went over to another page and I actually kind of formatted it up over here, right? So I'm just going to copy it and go back to my school overview. I mean, my guy in the queue page and go ahead and paste it there. It's just that simple. So now it's over here. But what I want to do, right? When I click this, I want the search to appear. And when I click the filter, I want the other elements to appear. I know you probably could have done this before with images and things like that and bookmarks, but actually that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to bring bookmarks in. So you go to view and you can say, I'm gonna show my bookmarks pane and my selection pane, all right? So I'm gonna click this guy, all right? Let's say add a bookmark, I'm gonna call it search, okay? And when the search is available, I want this element to appear and that would be that one. And I want all the other elements to hide, right? And then I'm gonna create a bookmark called filter. And when I choose this one, I want this one to be hidden. Just like that, right? So after I do it, create my bookmark, I hide it and I click update, right? And then when this one is selected, right? I want all, I want that one to be hidden. I want that one to be hidden. I like to click them because it kind of highlights the ones I want to be hidden. Right, that one, and finally, 
this one, and I'd like for my student name um, to be visible. So you can see right there, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click update on this one just to ensure that all the changes I made are, you know, persistent. And so now, you know, you can see if I'm on this one, it shows that, and if I'm on this one, it shows that one. Excellent. How do I make my buttons leverage those bookmarks? Well, that's really the easy um, intuitive part in, and intuitive part. So bef before the buttons were released, you could do this with images and other different things, elements on your on your report. But now with the buttons, they actually make it so easy. So I'm going to choose this button and you see action. I'm going to expand action, turn it on and say use a bookmark and use search. And then here I'm going to turn it on and I'm gonna say use bookmark and use filter, just like that, right? And we're gonna go ahead and save this. And now when I hit filter, you can see that all those appear. And when I hit search, you can see that the text search box appears. It's just perfect, it just works. When I hover, you can see how it kind of changes, right? So when you're in the desktop, you have to hit control to make these particular things work. And they absolutely work. But let's see what it looks like when you publish it out to the service. And now in a web browser, maybe, you know, I'm a principal or whomever it is, and I'm in a search, so I can say E7, eight, right? And press enter or click the search. And you'll see in just a second that it filters everything down to, you know, what contains E7, right? Or I can click filter and instead of using the free text now, right, I can use the filters here and say, let me see all of the students with, there we go, right? So it's just that simple. Now I have the ability to kind of, you know, make it sexy, right? More application like using the buttons, just toggling between each one. I choose search, it shows my free text free text box, and then I show um, filter, it shows all the different variations of those slices. Just like that, in a couple of clicks, right? A couple of steps, now I have the, I've given them the ability, instead of having those two pages to maintain, they use buttons and they can toggle between searching and filtering. Bam, just like that. What do you guys think? Got some other ways you're doing this? I'm sure you do. Post them in the comments below. If you have any comments, criticisms, whatever it is you'd like to share with us, post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, please be sure to subscribe. And if you like this video, if you like my video, bam, give me two big thumbs up. Well, you can actually only give one. As always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Boom, 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 boom. And the latest desktop blew up back.